years ago, the first Rotary Club was started in Chicago by a lawyer who, though born in the Middle West, was brought up in New England. It was his idea to have a group of men of every line of business and profession who should, in the spirit of the Golden Rule, practice friendship and cooperation. From that club has grown the world movement of Rotary. That Chicago lawyer, who still lives in Chicago, is here tonight, and it is now my privilege and honor to present him to you. I introduce to you all Paul P. Harris. Friends of the air, it is a real privilege to address you. We are gathered together in Boston from almost every civilized country of the world. We come from the British Isles, China, Japan, European and South American countries, Australia, New Zealand, and many others. More than 40 nations are represented, and some of the delegates will have circled the globe on their return to their native country. It is a most inspiring occasion. In the presence of this gathering, my mind very naturally reverts to the first meeting which was held in Chicago 28 years ago. Four of us were in attendance. Mighty oaks from little acorns grow. Perhaps there are two features of Rotary which more than any other challenge the attention of those who are not Rotarians. One is what we call our classification plan by virtue of which membership in Rotary is limited to one representative of each line of trade or profession. The other is the provision that neither racial, political, nor religious standards shall constitute barriers to membership. Through these two provisions, Rotary is thrown open to representatives of all walks of life to representatives of all countries and all forms of religion. Would this seem to open the door to all manner of discord? One might think so. In fact, many have said that human ingenuity could hardly have devised a plan of organization more fraught with peril. Herein lies the genius and the rotary, the glory of rotary. The formula or procedure is indeed simple. While Rotarians differ in many respects, in two respects, they are in perfect accord. First, they believe that all nations are respectable and desire to be honorable in their dealings with other nations. That it is the privilege of all men to worship God according to the dictates of their own consciences. In other words, Rotary stands for tolerance. Second, they believe that all honorable vocations are entitled to recognition if they are used in the service of society. With these points of agreement firmly established, disagreement is almost unknown. Rotary emphasizes the points of agreement and avoids controversial issues. Rotary thus becomes the common denominator the sanctuary to which all are welcome. Is there any valid reason why Catholic and Protestant, Jew and Gentile should not enjoy friendly intercourse? Well, it is done in Rotary. Catholic priests, Jewish rabbis, and Protestant ministers sit side by side in happy fellowship at Rotary Club meetings. If your travels take you to India, there you may see Mohammedans, Hindus, and Christians breaking bread together. Is this not as it should be? Remember the words, peace on earth, goodwill toward all men. To put it briefly, Rotary is trying to make the words of Robert Burns come true. You'll remember that. The time will come for all that when man to man shall brother be for all that. Those outside the membership frequently ask the question, how did it come about? 
That's a hard question to answer. One answer would be that Rotary's popular appeal is due to the fact that in Rotary, men are encouraged to be natural, just to be themselves. In this world where artificiality so abounds, it is refreshing to meet with groups who are not worshippers of cold, meaningless formalities. There's a bit of the boy in every man, and friendly, natural intercourse is the best way to bring it up. I wish that it might be your privilege as it is mine tonight to look in on this happy throng of big, strong men from Occident and Orient, from the frozen north and from down beneath the equator. Many of them have their wives with them. And the faces of all are radiant with smiles as they clasp each other's hands. If you are here, I believe that you would agree with me in my conclusion that the words of the bard of air were not the expression of an idle dream, that they were indeed prophetic and that the finest conception of human mind, the conception of universal goodwill and peace, will in God's good time be realized in very truth. Rotary in the final analysis is a way of life, a good, natural, wholesome, friendly way of life. The world is full of potential Rotarians who are not Rotarians in fact. Many of them are listening to me now. If you have the love of your fellow men in your heart, my friends, you are potential Rotarians.